So in 2 Corinthians 8, verses 8 through 12, says this. All right, praise the Lord. Well, you know what? I think we're going to read it in the Amplified. Yes, we are. I am not saying this as a command to dictate to you. So here comes Paul. If, if you know anything about the church of Corinth, okay, it was a troubled church. They, they, they had some battles. They had some issues. They had disagreements. Uh, uh, they would uh, cross the line a lot of times uh, and, and, and what have you, okay? So here what we have is that, but he's not, he's saying, I, I didn't come to dictate to you, I, you know, but, but, you know, to prove to you by pointing out, I just want to teach you some stuff here. Um, the enthusiasm of others, the sincerity of your love as well, for you are recognizing more clearly the grace of our Lord Jesus. So here he comes and he's talking to the Christian. He's saying, I want to point out about your love now because you recognize more than the other recognizes that the grace of our Lord his astonishing kindness, his generosity, his gracious favor, it's a big word around here, that through he we were made rich, yet for your sake he became poor. He went to a cross to suffer and, and took on poverty so we wouldn't have to live in poverty. That's why the old message back in the 70s, I could never understand. You bought a new car, you were like, oh my, carnal, secular, you know? You had to see them when I pulled up in a 1981, Oldsmobile 98, brand new, past the Pat, remember that? The car was about from here to Race Street. It was so long, you know? Remember that car? And it was a midnight blue. Glory to God. I wish I still had it. Midnight blue velour interior. It looked like a living room. You know? Pulled up in that thing, boy, I'll tell you what. They were screaming carnality all over me. But in any event, so let's go back to this. Yet for your sake he became poor so that by his poverty you might become rich. What a God we serve. Not only rich, but look what the Amplified says. Abundantly blessed. I give you my opinion in this matter. This is to your advantage. Who were the first to begin a year ago not? Only to take action, but to help the believers in Jerusalem. So in other words, they see your example, but also the first to desire to do it. So now finish this so that your eagerness in desiring may be equaled by your completion of it. So I like to say it this way, church, to Agape and those that are watching us, that I believe there's a time that comes in our lives as Christians, and I call it performance time that we have to perform up to who we say we really are. If we say we're born again, then we need to be living like we're born again. Thank you. If we say we love one another, it cannot just be words. It has to be more than words, church. It has to be expressed. It has to be seen in our lives. If we say that we have faith, are we exercising our faith in our time of struggle? Are we lowering our standard and compromising and growing weak? What we have declared about ourselves, we must also perform. We must be tangible examples of what a Christian is. The only way they're going to see Christ is through you and I, church. Amen. We must demonstrate that there is this God who cares. Not just say he cares. Not just say he's a God of love. We must demonstrate that. And, and sometimes it's not too easy. And this cannot be done if we lower our standards. Our standard 
must be a, a high standard, equal to none. It must be high. You must give yourself to the Lord and come under him and surrender your flesh, surrender your body, surrender yourself, your thinking to the Lord of Lords. It's the only way people will see this God that we're forever talking about. Amen? Amen. It's the only way. And one way that will help you, church, in this particular area as Christians, instead of just believing God, all right, and asking God to get you out of your situation, ask him to get you through your situation. There's a difference now. Get through it. Because, see, most of the strength you have probably came from adversity that you had. You get stronger when you live a high standard in the middle of your tribulation, in the middle of your trial and trouble. You, 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 you'll come through it as a stronger Christian. You, listen to me. Here's what I'm talking about. You can be weak in the area of your diet, but not get strong until you have a health challenge. You could be weak in your budgeting until you get into debt and then all of a sudden you become strong in budgeting. You know? Uh, come on, church. You, you know I'm, this is some good stuff I'm preaching here. Now, here's, here's what I want, to, want you to, 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 to see where I want to take you, okay? It's, it's when we walk in the spiritual, it's going to show up or in the supernatural it's going to show up in the natural in our lives. When we continue to, to, to walk by faith and what God called us to do, to be faithful in our calling or in our ministry, walk in love and forgiveness, he will show up and manifest that, okay, in the natural. Can't just talk about forgiveness. Can't talk about love. It has to show up in the natural. Now, when that happens, we become tangible examples to who this Christ that we talk about really is. See, this example, watch this, is a lifestyle. Every one of us has a lifestyle, church. Lifestyle is a pattern of behavior. It's what your lifestyle is. It's your belief system. You pattern yourself after those who share your belief system, don't you? Think about this. In other words, if I were to take 100 young people, okay, and put them in a room together, and they, they would, you know, talk and, 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 and mingle and what have you, and they would connect to people or other young people that have their same interests, same music. They, they, they like this kind of music. This group likes that kind of music. They connect, their lifestyles connect, you know? Uh, they like the way, uh, they like to dress this way. So that group connects with that group because of maybe fashion or, or anything of, of, that, um, of that nature, let's say, all right? They would, they would connect that way or, or maybe even their faith. And that's what I want to talk about. Even their faith, they would connect to somebody that has the same faith they have. Whether it's high school, elementary, college, I hope that's who you connect with, young people. All right? Lifestyles are easily discerned and they easily attract, you know? when they enter into a, a new school sometimes or a new grade or something like that, all right? They connect to someone that has the same belief system as them. Unfortunately, sometimes they, we, we will lower our standards to become someone else's lifestyle. Oh, don't you dare do that, church. Don't you dare do that. We, 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 we chase after the secular lifestyle. It looks more glorified. It looks sweeter. It looks nicer. It's more fun. Mm, 
my God, my God. Listen to me. Your lifestyle communicates to who you are, who you really are, what you believe in a nonverbal way. You don't even have to say a word, just your belief system and your style. So how am I going to be an example in a natural way? Well, that's the question. Here's the answer. Through the application of your faith, you apply your faith in everything you do. Someone once said to me, do you pray about everything you do? Yes. Yes. Going to buy a car? I'm praying. I'm praying for favor. I'm praying somebody gives me the car before I get there. Radical? No. Scriptural? Yes. Beloved, I, I wish above all things that you're blessed. Ooh, you're going to hear about that someday, man. I'm telling you, God is blessing people. Amen. So it shapes our pattern of behavior when we apply our faith. Then we become distinctly different from the world. And if we're not different from the world, then we need to examine our lives. You know what I'm saying here, right, church? All right. The difference, there must be a difference. There are people, because listen to me, a belief system and what you really believe are two different things. Huh. There are people who say Jesus is Lord and they're serving idols. They're bowing down to idols. You know? There are people that say, I love Jesus, but they won't step foot in a church. They won't read a Bible, okay? They won't do anything to prove they love Jesus, to exemplify that they love Jesus. That's, that's something different for them, you know? It's only when your faith lines up with the word of God that you're distinctly different. So listen now. I am a natural example when I'm glorifying God in my body or with my lifestyle. See? Or my lifestyle or my body should be used to glorify him in everything that I do. What am I saying? My body and the use of my body is the presentation or the purpose of what God has done for me and how I glorify him. The world, for the most part, will use their body for personal gratification sometimes, for personal use, okay? Not thinking of God in any way. And I'm not trying to say that every one of us are perfect here. You know, by no means. But what I am saying is that we have to glorify God in everything we do. When you're looking for a, a mate or if you're looking for a whoever, okay, or looking for friends, you know, I mean, you got to discern who's good for your lifestyle. Well, you know, the, the, the church folk today are going after, you know, as I say it, every barking Barbara, every classy Carol, you know, every terrific Tom and Dandy Dan and, oh my God, every one of them. So we got to be discerning because the, the, we as Christians are valuable to the kingdom of God, okay? And, and we should be using what God has blessed us with for the kingdom of God. Know ye not, 1 Corinthians 6, 19, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And the end of that verse, you know what it says? You are not your own. You can't do your own thing when you're born again. Why would you even want to do your own thing when you're born again, right? Let God do it for you. Let God line it up for you. God does it better. God says, I've got plans for you, not just a plan. He does it so much better, church. Yeah. It's very important because, see, the world will see, through, see Christ through you and I, church. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 12. Let me just breeze through this real quick. 1 Corinthians 6. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit or have any share of the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. And it goes through all of these different types of sins. Next verse, Okay. And it goes right down through everything there. I mean, it just breaks it all down, all right? And then the next verse says, Inherit or have any share in the kingdom of God, such were some of you, before you believed. 
but you were washed by the atoning sacrifice of Christ. You were sanctified and set apart. Aren't we glad that we're set apart, church? Aren't we glad? I glorify God what I put in my body. Not just but what I eat, but what I absorb spiritually, church. What I hear, what I read, you know? Listen, I'm, I'm telling you something. Alcohol and drugs are running rampant out there, destroying our young uh, uh, adults and our young uh, uh, generation. And, and, and it's a lie. It's a deception. It makes everything better until it makes everything worse. Hello. You hear what I just said? You know, that's what it does. And don't you forget that, church, especially young folks. Putting things in your body through the eye gate, okay, might not glorify God or even what you hear. Be careful what you hear. You know, some of us would say, you're, sociali you're socializing with people. And some of us would say that, that you know, uh, Pastor, you know, these people, you know, I hang out with them and, you know, we maybe go for coffee or something and the language is brutal, this, this, and that. He said, you know what? That's none of my business. That's their problem. No, it is your business. It is your business. Because let me tell you something. <clears throat> the Holy Ghost lives inside of you, right? Amen? Amen? All right. Do you think it's fair to the Holy Ghost to sit there and listen to that? Ooh. Somebody give me an Amen. I'm going to preach. You know? Well, what do I do? Stand up. Talk. So one of the ways to glorify God is your lifestyle, like we determine. Don't advertise, okay, if you can't support what you're advertising. So change, if you have to, who you associate with, if you have to. Now, because the Bible says, all right, well, let's go to it in 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14 through 18. I want you to see this because this is where some of the church gets a little confused. Be not unequally yoked. We'll get back to that in a minute. Together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what? Concord or harmony, but has Christ with Belial, okay, which is idols, or what part has he believe it with an infidel, non-believer, and what agreement has the temple of God with idols? And it goes on and on and on. Let me say this about what he's talking about when he says unevenly yoked. That does not mean that you can't go to a, a, a dinner with someone that is a non-Christian. It does not mean you can't have a cup of coffee with someone that has a totally different lifestyle than yours. It does not mean that, okay? It means to really come into a relationship with them, all right? A, a, a communion with them. That's what you need to be careful about when it says unevenly yoked. That's what it's talking about there, church. You understand what I'm saying? Even probably in, the, in, in some cases with businesses, all right? being unevenly yoked, all right? He's, he's saying to you that that needs to be looked at, that needs to be examined before you enter into that. It's not in the church is, is taking that apart and beating it up and all of a sudden the church is separating themselves from the people of the world, all right? Instead of separating yourself from the world. There's a big difference. How are we gonna get the world saved? The Bible says to go ye into the world and preach the gospel church okay so let me let me just wrap this up you know because in first peter 1 13 through 16 it talks about um living a holy life a holy life which means that we are responsible to live a higher standard on the job in our neighborhood wherever it may be we're responsible to live that standard above anyone else in the world, wherever it may be, all right? And he talks to us about being a, 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 an example, all right? We have been created, the Bible says, in the image of God. Notice he never said anything about in the image of an angel, you know? 
Well, you know, remember when, you know, it's, oh, he's such a little angel. You know, my mother never said that about me, just so you know. You know, just the opposite. You know? No, we're not created in the image of the angel. We're creating the image of God. You know what that means? It means after his likeness. It means, I mean, you take it a little further in the Hebrew, it means a resemblance. Oh, my God. It says that we are made in the resemblance of him. We're supposed to be like him. We're supposed to be looking like him, acting like him, having the appearance of him. We are a representative of who made us in his image is who we are. If we are going to be the apple of his eye... Come on, church. If we are fearfully and wonderfully made in his image, uh, then we need to go ahead and act like it so God can bless us, church. Yeah. He said we're the heritage of the Lord. We're what he left on this earth, his heritage, to get this gospel preached. We're designed the way God wanted to, us to be. It doesn't matter whether you're tall, short, chunky, thin, whatever it matters. It does not matter. It's what God designed us. Love yourself the way you are because if you don't love yourself the way you are, you are now doubting the creator of who created you the way you are. Hello. Come on, church. He has a purpose for you, and that means you're on a special assignment that no one else can do. Yep. Listen, you get folks up here um, worshiping, singing, right? You know your voice, wherever you are, okay, is different than that person next to you because that's the way God designed it. He does not want four of you, five of you, seven of you, okay, singing the same thing. Now watch this now, all right? or the same sound. Each one of you has a different voice. But he does want you singing in harmony. Come on. Come on, church. He wants you to be one. He wants us to be in unity. He said, behold, beloved, how good and pleasant it is when brethren gather together in unity. Hello, church. Being a Christian is not just a matter of a word. It's a lifestyle. It's something that says you're honest, you're good, you're committed to what you do. You see? So set our priority to who I'm going to be, how I'm going to walk, who I'm going to walk with, who I'm going to associate with, what I'm going to do, how my lifestyle is going to exemplify the Christ that I talk about all the time. And again, it, it, it's, and you're, you're, let me say it this way, your words also, not just your body or your lifestyle, your words have to walk, have to come out of you the way you present yourself as a Christian, then that's what should be coming out of your mouth. Now, I understand maybe you slip every now and then. Maybe you do. I don't know, okay? But that requires repentance right on the spot. Your words have to match who you say you are. You know? You got to walk the walk. You got to talk the talk, as we say. It has to happen. We have to be those people that God have designed us to be. If the blessings of heaven are going to open up on us, and I believe they are. I said this yesterday to somebody. I believe, church, that God is fixing to do something huge in the world. I'm not going to give you a time slot or anything like that. All I'm going to say, and I'm not talking about the rapture. I'm talking about the manifestation of his power. He is going to express it through the local body of Christ, not just this church, but churches all over the world. 
I want to see what's taking place in third world countries where the blind eye is being opened up, the lame is walking, the crutches are flying across stages. That's got to take place in the United States of America. I believe it's going to happen. I believe it's going to happen soon. And I believe God is going to manifest himself through his power. Why do you say that? Because it just to tickle your ears, God forbid, I say, God forbid, but I do say it because God is such a loving God. God is such a merciful God. He said, I've come that all might be saved, that none would perish. He's coming to do that, to manifest himself, to say, Look, I am the king of kings. I am the healer of your body. I am the savior of your soul. I am the only one that can forgive you. I am he that it was, is, and is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I am he that's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. I am the alpha. I am the omega. I am the king of kings, the lord of lords. I am the master of all. I'm the bright and morning star. I am he that will come. Come and open up the eastern sky. Split the eastern sky where the Bible says every eye shall behold me. Everyone shall see me. I'm coming back. I am who I say I am. I am Abba Father. I am the I am. What is that saying? He's saying I'm everything you need. You need healing. I am. You need blessing. I am. You need a salvation. I am. You need a touch in your body. I am. You need a blessing from on high. I am. You need prosperity. I am. You need a new car. I am. You need a new house. I am. Somebody give God a shout in this house.